Because life becomes contrary to the life that you know. Amen. So it ain't no way it can be smooth sailing if you don't know how to do the things you used to do. Amen. When you come to Christ, you got to learn a whole new way of life. Got to learn, got to learn how to deal with everything. Amen. And it don't happen overnight. You don't, you don't get no switch. <laughs> <laughs> Go from living out in the common world to living in the Christian world. They, they, they don't move you out of the carnal house into the Christian house where everything's all right. Somebody pay all the bills and wipe out all the bad things in your life. It just don't happen. Amen. But what, 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 what sustains you is faith that God's going to do it. Amen. Faith is believing something's coming before you actually see it. Amen. Amen. And, and you can't even see it at all. But because I know who God is, I know He gonna see me through. Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because, because we, when we get in a, in a bind, faith gotta go out the window. We gonna, we gonna hang it out the window with the rest of that stuff, and then we gonna go for what we know. But, but, but you gotta hold on because we didn't get there overnight and we're not going to get out overnight. All right. All right. Same thing that got you in is going to take that to get you out. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to go through some things. Y'all, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I know, but but when you first got out there in the world, you know how folks used to trick you? Mm-hmm. You know, they, they tell you, yeah, drink some of this, this vodka. It won't do nothing to you. <laughs> and you took a big shot and it, it hurt going down. And, Ted got to swimming. <laughs> they just lied to you, but you gutted it up because you don't want to seem like the oddball. <laughs> and, and, man, and you know, when I when I used to go out, I, I didn't like beer, but all my friends were beer drinkers. And I could drink maybe one or two a night, but they drunk one or two every 30 minutes. And, and, and y'all may not have been way about the rounds, but with us, we everybody had to buy a round. And when the first person got through with you, well, ordered another one. And when the next one got through, you, 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 and so it was always somebody could gulp them down, but I wasn't one of them. I so when they got through, they were they were drunk five or six, and I got five or six sitting in front of me. You know, I'm thinking there's something wrong with this picture, so I got to hurry up and catch up. Amen. But that's how the world trick us. We think we got to do something to be accepted out in the world. So when things ain't going right in our Christian life, what do you think we go back to? Now you better come on down here with me. <laughs> you know, we go down here and Mr. Charlie don't ain't looking. We snatch all that stuff. You better come on down here with me. And now we are going trying to make it on our own. And of course, whatever you take what don't belong to you, sooner or later somebody gonna come take you. Oh, no. <laughs> And trouble builds up and and, and, and and all kinds of emotions set in because you know when you mess up you don't want nobody to know you messed up but everybody know already so you keep messing up trying to get out of the mess up and you just get in the bigger mess up but when you come to God you got to leave the messing up alone and let me tell you something else once you have repented you don't have to keep repenting of the same thing Amen. no more. Amen. God said, if you bring it to me, I will forgive you of that, and I won't remember them no more. And I'm going to give you the ability to not do that anymore. Amen. Repenting is, is godly sorrow for what you did. Amen. It's not saying I'm sorry. It's saying I'm having a godly sorrow. Some down inside of you that saying you that bothers me to do that, and then you may not do it no more. Amen. Well, Unless you have faith in God, you're going to go right back to it when times get hard. Amen. Right. Amen. Look at the Israelites. They, they have been delivered uh, out of bondage. Mm-hmm. I mean, slavery. Yeah. Yeah. Slavery. And God showed them all the miracles of getting them free. Yeah. Come on. Pharaoh breathing down their neck. And, God parted the Red Sea so they could walk through. And they didn't have to slosh through on mud. They walked through on dry ground. Got, got out of that. And God did all of that stuff. And the first little sign of trouble, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Back to bondage. And, and man, don't that sound like us? Don't that sound like us? Because come to church and you're trying to make things, to make things new. But you come to church and, and them bills still hitting. And you still ain't got no way to pay for them. You, you come to church and, 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 and them folk that you used to call your friends, 
Uh, they, they they still call and trying to get you to do what you used to do. Since you since you stopped doing that, you bored. You ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> And, 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 and all the folk calling you to do some of them same folk doing right. what they've been doing. Right. The temptation becomes overbearing sometimes. Yes. Like I said earlier, if you go around people that cuss and you trying to quit cussing, it ain't going to happen. What has to happen is when I decide I wasn't no cuss no more, God had cussing offend me. Amen. And, and so those folks that cussing, I had to tell them, listen, don't use that language around me. And for people who cuss, they don't want to be around you. All right. You can't deal with them. You, you, you get on their nerve talking about don't cuss. <laughs> you used to cuss. Yeah. And so yeah, the, the pressure on us to go back to what we know best is tremendous. All right. and, 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 and if we don't have faith, and if we're not secure, in our faith, if we don't know for sure that that I, I may have to be here in this condition for a long time, but God is going to make a way for me. If we don't know that, Amen. 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 We, we go back. Going back is easier than going forward. See, I know where I've been. I can go back there, but I don't know what's ahead of me. And, and, and I'm looking and I don't see nothing good. All I see is deprivation. I, I say, I'm going to have to suffer. I'm going to have to give up everything I know. And we look it up there and we don't see. Where Jesus is. When, when he's going to show up, you got to have faith that he's already made a way. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. I heard somebody say one time, if you pray and, and uh, for something and God don't happen. Don't look at God. Look at you. All right. Maybe you're not in blessing range. Maybe right. you need to get rid of something to receive your blessing. That's all right. You got to get to be secure yes, in your faith. Amen. We, we look at the scripture. 19 says that, uh, in, in essence, I'm going to translate it for you. It said that that was a time when nobody but the high priest could go into the, the temple in the holy room. That was a room set aside. And that room was covered up by a curtain. And, and only once a year put the high priest go in there on the Day of Atonement. That was the only day that he could go in there. And he went in there and he made sacrifices for everybody's sin. So everybody else had to wait outside and wait for him to come out. See if he didn't did so. Well, 19 says we don't have to do that no more. He says that God, Jesus, could, because of his blood, he split that curtain in two. Amen. That everybody now can go to the Lord yes. at any time. So, so when you when you try to change your life and things get a little, a little hard, fall on your knees and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And let me tell you, he didn't promise that he would hear your prayer. Yes, he now, he said, you may have to wait for an answer, but I'm going to hear you. Right. you got to be secure in your faith right. to believe that God heard my petition, yeah. that he know what I'm going through, yeah. and that he got the power yeah. to fix it. Yeah. And I just got to be able to hold on until he comes. Yes, you you, you got to be secure yeah. in your faith. If you're not secure in your faith, shaky faith is, is it's, it's tough. <laughs> you know, like that. I got a little old sometimes. I get a little shaky on, on that one leg. I got to brace myself. Well, like you brace that. yourself with some, with, some, with some worship and some, yeah. some prayer. You need to brace yeah. yourself with reading God's scripture. You need yeah. to brace yourself with some meditation. Yeah. Maybe you need to get that little moaning sometimes. But I would say we confuse the devil <laughs> when we moan it because he don't know what we're saying. But, right. but God listens to our heart. He don't wait for our words to come out. You know what we're feeling inside. God said, I'm going to come see about you because your faith is secure. You're going to hold on the best you can. So I'm going to give you some holding on power. I'm going to let you go through some stuff so I can clean you up. You know what I'm talking about? You ever got in the bathtub and the hot water got cold, but you weren't through yet? <laughs> you ran out of it, you ain't got children. Though. They got a good, good hot water heat. Every, every now and then you let it run too long and before you can get through you, but you still got to get clean. So, so you got to go on and grit it up with the cold water and hold on. But we got to suck it up sometimes in our world. 
Yeah. Because, because, because things get a little shaky, but you just got to suck it up and hold on. You, you just got to quit them. It looks like somebody's gnawing at the rope you're holding on to. 